Hello, it's Sage here on the Sage channel, and today I'm showing you something, well, something that's not really ever going to be finished, so I figured I might as well show it. This was a project I started last year, about halfway through the year, where I was going to build a modular tile set for colonies, and I got some of the main hallway bits done, and an update came out which changed the way reflections worked, and I ended up getting distracted by other things, and ended up just deciding I didn't like the way I was doing things. The basic gist of this is I used about two or three different 1080p textures, or 1024 textures to be more exact, for each one of these blocks, and I thought, you know, we could use maybe a few less and just use tiling textures and then I could use those same textures for larger blocks in the future so I ended up scrapping the whole project but I figured instead of just letting this fall into the void and never to be seen again I'd go ahead and show you what I did build so let's do an F6 turn on our UI and I'll just show you around and I'll show you how this thing got built like I said it was supposed to be a colony tile set so if I was to go ahead and make ourselves a little flat area here to build upon I actually show you all the pieces I did build. I should note, none of these pieces have LODs, so they're all going to be a high poly count. None of these pieces have build states. So that's one of the reasons I'm not really going to be... Well, I might release this if a lot of people want it. I might just toss it up there. But I just got to point out to you guys that these are never going to get updated or finished. You know, in fact, I've decided I'm going to put this mod up there, but just be aware that this mod is never going to be finished, it's never going to be updated. If you want to go ahead and poke about it yourself, you can use any of the files that I do put out there, which won't really be many, uh, and try to backwards engineer it or whatever, but just know that this mod is not going to be updated further from me. And again, no build states, no LOD, so you're going to have some frame rate stuff. So these are all the blocks I put together. And like I said, each of these blocks used about three different textures. One for sort of the sides here, where you can see we got a cool little barcode thing stuck on there, a bunch of screws, just a big piece of metal, and then the top section. Uh, and then we got another texture mainly for the bottom area here. And then we got one, I believe, for the interior walls. And then I think maybe we had another one for the ceiling and yet another one for the floor. I can't exactly remember how they're cut up. But it ended up being a lot of different N24 textures just for one block. And I use those same textures on all of these here. Thing is, this modular set was originally supposed to have bigger blocks than just these 1x2s, where it's one block from left to right, four back, and then two up down. I was also supposed to have these big room blocks, and I found that if I was doing that, I'd probably have to make new textures for all those, and it started being tons and tons and tons of textures, and consistency became a problem, and also I was afraid it was going to be eating up a whole lot of memory. So, if I was to do another modular little colony, now it would just be maybe four or five textures that are designed to tile, and I just model in a lot of detail. Anyway, let's show you some of these blocks. I started out with the basic hallway one right here. Simple hallway. The idea was I was building this for the future of Space Engineers. The idea that eventually we should have blocks inside blocks, even though Merrick seems a bit reluctant at it, but I like the idea that you'd put your own light in right at the top, that if you wanted a conveyor system, you'd simply put a conveyor pipe right in there. Unfortunately, you know, unlike medieval engineers, we can't just do that, but that's one of the reasons this had this elevated position. These are pressurized, but there's an unfortunate situation now where the way pressurization works in the game is a bit of a, well, it's a problem, really. The way it's designed is that if you have the connection points for a block. So if I was to go ahead and try to place this one here, and we're going to do, I think it was Alt F10, was it? Or F10, like, give me a second here. There we go, Alt F11. We can show mounting points and enable debug draw. So there you go. And you see with mounting points, you can see that I have this sort of mesh around the whole thing here. And that basically says which areas can allow air in and out, and which areas can hold it in. So basically you have to make the whole exterior each of the walls for the actual full size of the model, it can only ever be square, you have to basically set those areas with X and Y coordinates for each of the different sides, which means you cannot have the bottom there start halfway up. It has to be all the way at the bottom of the whole model, which is really rather unfortunate because then, of course, it means that lower section that we have right here would be pressurized. 
bit remaining. I don't, uh, bit remaining, bit unfortunate. I don't know what these time remaining things are. Let's go ahead and get these off of our screen. We don't need any of those. So all these blocks do have pressurization, but it also means this lower section here that was supposed to depressurize is also pressurized. A little unfortunate. Uh, so yeah, here's the first block. Got my little pipes on the ground. Pretty nifty. I got my little texture details for the floor panels and stuff. Very cool. From there, I went ahead and made a version with a window. Uh, originally, you could see through this pretty easily, but like I said, it got altered in an update, so suddenly I had to rework the way Glass did, and I just didn't have the patience for that. I'm sure they did it for a good reason, so nobody ever look at the devs bad for what they did there. That was a good change they did. I just didn't have the time and patience to go ahead and rework the glass. I then went ahead and stuck in a corner segment. Pretty cool. You can see in the darker light some of the textures actually look a bit different because I actually have a little bit of wear and tear on them similar to my, uh, what do you call that, hover inch and thruster where the light will actually hit the areas where the paint's been peeled back and it's sort of bare metal that's being hit there. Pretty cool. And it also has a bit of a reflectivity to it. Even the floor you can see. You can see some reflectivity showing up there. Same goes for the bottom actually on these you can see. A lot. Of, it's really nice. I love how the textures and stuff came out on these. And you can even see some scratches Really, really, if you look close, you can see a few little scratches that show up on these. Pretty nifty stuff. I really like the art of these. It's just, overall, I'm not too happy with them. Uh, moving on from there, I did go ahead and rework that piece there to add a actual door piece to this. So sort of making it a blast window. Uh, let's go ahead and put down a reactor really quickly. Just so we can power this thing up. There we go. Uh, so yeah, I put a window here, a door to this. So I can actually press this button. Uh, pressing T on it doesn't seem to want to work, but there we go. I press close. You can barely see it because of the way that they changed it. But there is indeed a door that has just closed in there. Really, really hard to see there. But there we go. If I clip through it, you can see we actually had a door with a little bit of detail in it. Uh, and if we go ahead and select this again, you can tell it to open and then select back. Yeah, see if the door goes up and down inside the panes of glass. Pretty nifty, but... Alas, glass changed and couldn't really see it. And also, pressing T on that damn button for some reason wasn't working. So, fear a few things were starting to go wrong with it even there. From there, I went ahead and made a open to always, you know, four-way passageway. So, really, you could, if you're building your passageway, have four different hallways connecting out of it. I also had just the three-way connection here. So, you'd have one wall and have the path going another way. And then I had a dead-end block right here. And then one dead end block with windows on all the sides. And you can also see all the blocks had windows at the top, so some pretty nifty stuff. I like them. I was very happy with some of it, but other things, like I said about the textures and some of the windows going wrong and the glass being changed, I ended up burning out on it pretty quick. If you want to see how it actually looks when we walk through it, we can actually walk through it. They do have proper collision on everything. Uh, I seem to feel like I'm walking really slow. How have I done that? Ah, caps lock, of course. But you can see full setup on in the interior. The lighting in this game of course changes because it's like, oh you're not outside now, so it changes the shift like that. For some reason I'm getting snagged on something there, not sure what that's all about. And you can see the light does actually come through the windows and shine in, so you get some well, pretty awesome looking views of the place. Like, oh god, is there something in this place with me? Could something be sneaking about that I'm not aware of? Might we find something dangerous here? Anyway, it's pretty nifty. Of course, we can go ahead and uh, turn on our flashlight, though, and all of a sudden, it's nowhere near as creepy. And you can see even the cords would run along the ground, so giving you the idea that the whole place was supposed to be powered up, and the power would sort of run through those cables and all this. Because that's one thing that's always bugging me a little bit in Space Engineers, is just the fact that the power just transfers through these giant metal blocks. So I figured, hey, let's stick some cables on the floor. thought that would be pretty cool. Anyway, you can see, all of this is just built using those few pieces you saw, similar to if you've ever played... Oh, what's that game? Time Splitters, the way you could build larger rooms by just sticking these simple blocks together. This is the same sort of thing here. We're just sticking all the blocks together and building out this whole place. It's it's pretty nifty, but, well, you know, dead project now. I love how shiny that floor is, though. The metal. I mean, it was nice. And this was pretty cool. But, uh, alas, a dead project it is now. No amount of comment poking will ever get me to revive this. I might make a new module colony in the future. Out those holes that we can see there, right there at the top. But, um, yeah. This one's a dead one. Anyway, guys, I just thought I'd go ahead and show this whole thing off. Uh, one last thing I'd like to show, or at least two last things, is one, I'd like to... Why is there a collision there? It's like... Oh, I think that's another thing that's gone wrong. 
Yeah, I think the collision volume for the actual door is floating right here. If you all shift F12, you might be able to see it. Uh, no. Sometimes collision volumes for doors don't actually show up when I do that, so that's what's going on there. Really unfortunate, though. Really unfortunate. So you got some issues with that. Like I said, this mod, I'm going to put it up on the Steam Workshop, but uh, just know God dang it, that rather unfortunately, it's never going to get any more love from me. If you'd like to go ahead and poke around with it, feel free to, but um, don't expect to get updated. There we go. There's the damn thing. Uh, let's just close this blast door. Pretty cool. Alrighty, uh, let's go ahead, run down to one big room just to show you just you can build these absolutely massive rooms down here. Just simply using that four-way open everywhere with one. Pretty nifty. And now let's go ahead and pop in the spectator and pop next to our character, shall we? On top of where we are, that's the big room we're in now. And we're just going to go ahead and demonstrate how you'd build some things. So, let's build a four-way connector. Let's build a hallway coming off of that. Really super simple. I don't really need to do this, but I just figured I'd share. You can see all the buttons at the bottom. I did make some thumbnails for them. And you can also see that I have a lot of... What do you call it there? These little arrows next to them. That was to sort of show you that like this is a hallway that leads this way and this way. And that's the same thing, but you can see from the thumbnail there's a window. And this is the same thing with the gear there and a window, which means it's a window with a door. And... Pretty simple stuff, really, but uh, I figured, uh, yeah, I, I just, I don't know, I just burnt out on this damn thing pretty, pretty quick, unfortunately. Anyway, like I said, it also had a few art ideas that I kind of felt I should have done differently, so if I do do another modular colony, it will be taking those into account. Alrighty, guys, there you go. You can see how you can build up some stuff with this, and of course, if you wanted to build a room on one of these, it's pretty simple. All you'd have to do is something like this. Use this piece, then we'll go ahead and stick on a corner piece like that, another corner piece like that, and another corner piece like that. And now we've basically built just this simple little room like here. Super, super simple. I was going to also have a door piece, a stairwell piece, and a bunch of others, but... Like I said, this thing died. Anyway, let's cap this off. Oh, that's not the cap I thought it was. Uh, number seven, because it's got an arrow with a end to it. There's actually a tiny little bit of red on the arrow down there at the bottom for those. And we'll cap this one off with the big window section too. There we go. And you as well. well why not? There we go. So uh, we can see we built a tiny little colony segment. I was going to have ones with control panels and all sorts of stuff. Oh, this should have been a five way, not a three. There we go. Five way, four way. There we go. Plop. There, now you can see we got our whole colony set up. Pretty cool. I thought it was, I think I still think it's pretty cool. It's just I just don't have it in me to revive this project since it's sold now and there's so many things I think I should have done differently. Alrighty. What the very last thing I have to show is the fact that these can actually be colored too. You can see I had different sections of these that could be colored in. Uh, we can actually just aim over here and do that. Boop. And you see now it colors in this sort of upper section so you could color code your hallways was the idea so you could have different sections of your colonies uh if you came in here you can see the little lines in the center would be colored as well as the lines on the ceiling I, I liked it it was it had potential it just um like i said i really should have done a few things differently <laughs> i know i'm repeating myself a fair bit here and then guys that's it that's everything um yeah it was nifty but it's dead now and I figured instead of just letting it be forgotten and tossed into the void, I might as well just show off what I did have. <laughs> like I said, if you guys want to poke around with it, feel free to. It'll be on the Steam Workshop for you guys. But I'm not going to update it or anything. Thanks so much for watching. That's that. And I will um, see you next time. Ta-ta.